what is good everybody welcome back to another episode brought to you by the league ffb today we're going to be talking about my must start and my must sit players as we head into week 10 of the fantasy football season as always these episodes are episodes of matchups that i am targeting matchups that i like and maybe matchups that i think are a little bit more risky so without wasting any more time let's hop right into today's video and let's start talking about my must start players So let's kick it off at the wide receiver position. The first player that I want to talk about as a must start player this week is going to be Tank Dell of the Houston Texans. Now Tank, he gets a matchup against the Detroit Lions, which has a projected game total of about 49 points. So there is going to be projected a lot of points in this matchup. Detroit is currently ranked 27th against the wide receiver position. So this is a very good matchup for Tank Dell to target. Now, Obviously, last week when Tank Dell was the number one wide receiver in this offense, he had nine targets for six receptions and 126 yards. He finished as a top 12 play at the wide receiver position, making those of you that started him definitely worthwhile. Now, the one thing that stood out to me was the usage. He had a 32% target share last week, and that was obviously with Stefan Diggs and Nico Collins out of the lineup. Now, the reason why I think he is a play this week, even if Nico Collins gets back in the lineup, is he's going to have a larger target share than he has in weeks past. Now, the thing is, I don't necessarily expect Nico Collins to be back in the lineup this week either. He hasn't practiced this week so far at the time of this recording, so there is a chance that Tank Dell goes in as the number one wide receiver for the Houston Texans this week, and if he does, he's still going to see a massive target share, probably closer to that 30% that we saw last week. And because of that, if you do decide to play him, I think he's a guy who could find himself as a high-end wide receiver too, maybe even a low-end wide receiver one, depending on if Nico Collins is in the lineup, but definitely be playing Tank Dell this week if you have him in your teams. Now let's move on to my next must start wide receiver. I want to talk about Brian Thomas Jr. of the Jacksonville Jaguars and this one is a little bit risky. I'm not going to lie. I still love the matchup though. 45 point projected game total against the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings are 31st against the wide receiver position right now so they're giving up a ton of fantasy points to that wide receiver position. Now the Jaguars are four and a half point underdogs in this matchup meaning that it could be a good game script for Brian Thomas Jr. because the Jaguars are going to be passing to play keep up with the Minnesota Vikings. Now, the one thing that makes this a little bit risky is it sounds like Trevor Lawrence may not be in the lineup for the Jaguars. So if that is the case, I'm still going to be playing Brian Thomas Jr. And the reason why is he is the number one target in this offense. When you look at his target share, over the course of the year, currently sitting in about that 20% target percentage. But when you look at the wide receivers, he's seeing about a 34% target percentage. So the thing about a backup quarterback, Mac Jones, I don't necessarily think he is that big of a downgrade to Trevor Lawrence. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. I don't think Trevor Lawrence is a bad player, nor do I think Mac Jones is an upgrade for Brian Thomas. But Mac Jones is a former first round pick. He should be able to get the ball to his number one wide receiver. And when you get to that backup quarterback, they like to condense that a little bit more. They usually look in at that number one wide receiver, that number one target, and they dial into that guy. So I do think that Brian Thomas Jr. could see a larger target share with the backup quarterback. And in a game where they're going to be playing keep up, Brian Thomas Jr., this is still a great matchup. This is still a player that I'm going to play. Don't be scared of Mac Jones. I think this is still a top 20 play at the wide receiver position. Make sure you play Brian Thomas Jr. Now moving on over to my must-start running backs, I want to talk about the same game. We're going to talk about Aaron Jones of the Minnesota Vikings. Now like I said, this is a game with a 45 projected game total. Well, just because the Jaguars are the underdogs, that means that Aaron Jones and the Minnesota Vikings are the favorites. They should have a game script where they can run the ball. Now Jacksonville is currently ranked 27th against the running back position. Aaron Jones, he's been seeing a ton of opportunities this year, averaging about 19.3 opportunities per game, accounting for about 70% of the rushing share and seeing a target share out of the backfield at about 14%. He's getting a lot of touchdown opportunities. This is going to be a smash spot for Aaron Jones. And Aaron Jones himself is coming off of a couple disappointing weeks. He's been the running back 26 in both week eight and week nine. And so he's going to be looking to pick that up here in week 10. I personally think this is a guy who's going to be a back end running back one this week. He's a top 12 play, a guy that I'm definitely trying to get into my lineup. So I think you should be trying to get him into your lineup as well. And now let's go to my last must start running back. I want to talk about Tyrone Tracy Jr. of the New York Giants. We're talking about another game where the matchup is great. 32nd against the running back position his opponent being the Carolina Panthers. Obviously, this is a smash spot. You want to play the defense that is dead last against the running back position. And the Giants are six and a half point favorites. Yes, a positive game script for Tyrone Tracy as well. Now you look back, starting at about week five, when he started seeing more of the snaps, he has been a top 10 play at the running back position three of his last five games. Now in week seven, he fell outside of the top 40. Last week in week nine, 
he was outside of the top 30. So people may be looking at Tyrone Tracy and saying, man, he disappointed me last week. Should I plug him into my lineup? The answer is absolutely yes. If you have him playing against the Carolina Panthers this week, this is a guy who needs to be in the lineup because he is going crazy every time that he is getting a massive workload. And not only has Tyron Tracy been a top performer three out of his last five weeks, every single week this season that he has seen over 20 opportunities, he has finished as a top 10 back. So I think he could see 20 opportunities here in this game against the Carolina Panthers. And this is a guy that I'm viewing as a top 15 option in my fantasy football leagues right now. I think you need to get him into your lineups. A high-end running back two in my rankings this week and somebody you should definitely be playing. But now that we've talked about the players that I think you should try and start, let's talk about the players that have some riskier matchups that you may be considering benching this week. The first guy I want to talk about is at the wide receiver position. We're going to talk about Lad McConkey of the Los Angeles Chargers. And I get it. Lad McConkey has been kind of on fire over the last couple of weeks. He started to see a little bit more usage. The Chargers, they started to throw the football a little bit more as well. But Lad gets a matchup this week against the Tennessee Titans, who are the number one ranked defense against wide receivers this year. This is a game with a 38 and a half point projected game total. So one of the lowest, if not the lowest of the entire weekend and it feels very much to me like Lad McConkey is going to be a guy who has to get the touchdowns if he is going to be beneficial for you in your fantasy football leagues. All of these things considered obviously there's going to be opportunities where you're still going to have to play Lad McConkey. There's a lot of injuries at the wide receiver position and there's just quite frankly not a lot of great options sometimes so I understand if you have to throw him into your lineups. He's coming off of a very big week in week eight where he had that two touchdown game and that's got a lot of people very excited about him. I'm excited about Lad McConkey as well. Don't dislike like the player. This just very much feels to me like a very bad matchup for him and a very bad spot to be in if you have to spot start Lad McConkey this week. So if you are plugging him into your lineup, this is a guy who I think is going to fall outside of my top 24 wide receivers on the week. So in those leagues where you have two starting wide receivers, you may not be starting Lad McConkey. Maybe he finds his way into your flex spot. Maybe not. Maybe you have some better options. But Lad McConkey, the matchup doesn't scream must start for me this week. So I'm probably going to be looking at some other options. Now moving on to my next wide receiver, I want to talk about about Michael Pittman Jr. This is a player that I'm also kind of weary of starting this week. He is questionable right now with a backslash finger injury. He did not practice on Wednesday, but usually that tends to be a veteran day, so we're not too worried about that right now. However, the matchup against the Buffalo Bills this week, they are the fourth best defense against the wide receiver position so far this year, and Michael Pittman Jr. just has not been the Michael Pittman Jr. of years past. He only has two weeks so far this year where he has been a wide receiver two or better. In fact, he's been outside of the top 50 in five of his last nine games. So this is a player who really doesn't have the safe floor that he's had in weeks past. Obviously, Joe Flacco did not look great last week. And also, Josh Downs has kind of emerged as the number one wide receiver in this offense. Maybe not the most talented guy in the offense, but he's definitely seeing the most targets right now. So I think we need to be cautious with Michael Pittman Jr. It's not a great matchup. This is also not the best offense to be investing in right now. They just don't look that great. They're trying to figure some things out. And Michael Pittman Jr. is banged up. I'm probably avoiding Michael Pittman Jr. if I can. And this is a guy who's outside of my top 36 wide receivers right now. So definitely not even a wide receiver three play for me here this week against the Bills. So now that we've talked about my must sit wide receivers, let's talk about the running backs. I want to talk about Tony Pollard of the Tennessee Titans. Now, Tony Pollard is also banged up. He has a foot injury, but he had that last week. He still played in the game. He still saw a massive workload. He saw 31 opportunities, finishing as a top 10 back. This is not the same type of matchup for Tony Pollard. I think that heavy workload is starting to catch up to Tony Pollard. He doesn't profile as a huge bell cow type of running back, and this Los Angeles Chargers defense is the second best running back defense in the NFL right now with a projected game total of only 38 and a half points where the Tennessee Titans are projected to lose. So not only is it a low scoring game, it is a game with a bad game script for Tony Pollard and a very good defense. So I think Tony Pollard, there's a lot of things that we should probably be nervous about this week. He's a guy that I don't know if he's going to have the big day for you unless he finds the end zone. And there's a chance he can do that. Obviously, there's a chance anybody can get into the end zone any week, but I don't want to bet my whole week on Tony Pollard finding the end zone. And if you are deciding to play Tony Pollard, despite the tough matchup, despite some of the things we've talked about, this is a guy who I think is very much just a fringe running back to this week and maybe won't even make my top 24 running backs when the week is all said and done. And now last but not least, I want to talk about Javante Williams of the Denver Broncos. Again, another very tough matchup for Javante Williams. He gets the number one ranked defense Kansas City Chiefs in a game where the Denver Broncos are eight point underdogs. So that could mean that there is going to be some receiving ability for Javante Williams in this matchup. Maybe he has a little bit of upside there, but he just hasn't been that great on the ground. The Denver Broncos, they do struggle against some of these better defenses. Over the 
last couple of weeks, in week eight, a matchup against Carolina, Javante barely cracked the top 36. Last week against Baltimore, he was outside of the top 30. It just hasn't been great for Javante Williams. He's only seeing about 55% of the rushing share. He's only seeing about 12% of the target share. He's not seeing a lot of red zone opportunities. It feels very much like Javante Williams is a boom bust, touchdown dependent type of running back right now in fantasy football. And that's a guy that I don't really want to bet on, especially against a defense as good as the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, that said, if you are going to be playing Javante Williams in your leagues, I think this is a guy who is very much flirting with falling outside of my top 36. I'd have him somewhere between probably running back 32 and running back 36 right now in my current rankings. But like I said, as the week moves on, we could start to push him down as we get some more information. That said, this is a guy I'm avoiding in my lineups. If you don't have to play him, I would consider benching him this week. This is not a great matchup for Javante Williams. So there you have it, folks. There are my must start and must sit running backs and wide receivers here as we go into week 10. Obviously, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and make sure you go join our free Discord. All of that is going to be linked in the description down below. Like I said, it's a free Discord. There is no risk in joining that. There's 250 plus people that want to talk fantasy football with you, and it is the best place to get my information so you don't have to leave all of your questions in the comment section. That said, though, if you want to leave some questions in the comment section, I will answer those as much as I can before we get to the games here on Sunday. But with all of that being said, I have nothing else for you today. I will see you on our next episode. Until then, peace out.